Let's dive into this today, man. I really am excited about this call today. Um, you know, just kind of being in this space and, and the landscape, what it what it is right now. I think this is going to serve a lot of people. So the first trait that I see in all successful agents that they have is that they follow a daily schedule. Um, so I want to unpack that a little bit. Um, AJ, what are your initial thoughts on following a daily schedule? Yeah, one of the things I learned early on in my career is if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. Simply meaning if you don't time block the key income producing activities, it's probably not going to happen. You know, so it's like if you plan out your whole week ahead of time and, and the key elements are in there of, of what makes you successful, it's, it's going to be a win for you. And if we're not in there, well, it's, it's probably not going to happen. So it's, it's time blocking really, you know, maybe things with your kids, your spouse, all your personal stuff first, working out your hobbies. So, so get all that in the calendar, but then between, you know, your working hours, say you work from eight to four, eight to five or nine to six, whatever it might be really taking a look at your day and being very efficient with your time. And then the, the one thing, that I want people to remember too, when it comes to really having a, a schedule, if you erase something, you have to replace it later in the week. I know a lot of times agents get busy and they find any excuse possible, maybe to skip prospecting, lead generation. So they, they skip it. So they're erasing it, whether or not they actually erased it or not, they missed it. So if, if that happens, especially for income producing activities, you got to replace it. You got to put it back in your calendar somewhere else or, or you just start getting behind on your goal. Um, I found that to be crucial. And uh, and yeah, you just kind of you, 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 you stop wasting a lot of time when, when you follow your schedule. You know, I know you and I, John, we're firm believers in, you know, freedom comes from having discipline to follow a schedule from following a, your calendar. And uh, I think a lot of agents miss that. So it's essential, man. I think that's where agents should start. They got to get with their mentor coach and, and figure out, hey, what does a productive week look like? And then time block that, schedule it out every week. Yeah, I had a mentor I worked with and he used to have me color code my schedule. Yeah. And he'd be like, all right, there's green time, there's personal time. And we allocated blue to that. And then he said, so there's green time which is money making time, personal time. And then there was just like red, which was like things that had to happen that were necessary, but not necessarily income producing activities. Um, and we used to like, it would be interesting to see the colors on there. And, you know, when you had that green time, it was like, hey, if you want to be effective, you need to start treating these income producing times, these income producing activities, prospecting lead gen, you need to treat those like an appointment. Because if you want a listing appointment, you wouldn't like stop to do your laundry or check your email in the middle of it. And yet that's what so many agents do when it comes to prospecting. Um, you know, one thing that I've always, I've always done is try to take what, what are the things that are going to move the needle the most and try to schedule those things first. So once I have my schedule and I've, I've sort of gotten my personal boundaries in there and my personal time, and I'm like, this is what I'm working with. This is what I'm creating and providing for my family with what are the critical activities that have to happen? You alluded to it with the lead generation and the prospecting. And um, what I think is always interesting is if I'm coaching an agent and I look at what they're actually doing, I find that they typically like conceptually understand what I'm saying right now, but they do the opposite. So right. they, they let their prospecting times come, you know, whenever they might happen or fit in. And as a result, they don't. Um, AJ, did, did you schedule your prospecting time first or how did you do that? Yeah, it was pretty simple for me. Like you said, most important thing should be in your schedule first. And then I think most important thing should be not only put in your schedule first, but it also happen first. That way it, you can't miss it. You know, it's, it's so easy to say, well, I'm going to prospect from four to six every day and then your, your day gets out of hand things come up you know you got to pick up your kid from school because because he or she got sick you know you got a, a closing that got rescheduled or pushed back so you got to go to that at four o'clock or so many things can happen your day just gets out of control and then you miss the prospecting session and you never replace it so to avoid that from happening i recommend and this is exactly what i did is every day from 8 to 11 i was on the phone prospecting and doing lead follow-up. It, it was that simple. And I never let anything get into that time block. And what you said, John, with that color exercise, because I did the same thing with, with my calendar at one point, 
the, the like let's say the red stuff is the stuff that has to happen but it's not necessarily income producing those are also the things that you can delegate you know so it's it's really cool when you see all right you got your personal time in blue money making in green you want as much money making um green time as possible in, in your work time and as little red as possible and then you can start to see well hey you know if I did hire an assistant, what would they do? Well, they would start taking the red tasks off and that would allow you to have more green time. You know, that's going to be negotiating contracts, lead generation, going on appointments, you know, that's it. So uh, that exercise is so powerful. So if you feel like, you know, maybe you got too much on your plate right now, or you're really not spending enough time on generating new business, this is a great exercise for anyone to do to, to start to figure that out. I mean, you can hire a virtual assistant, whatever to take that off your, off your plate. Yeah. It's so good, man. Like, I actually didn't do it that way, but a lot of top agents that I know, they have that coveted eight to 11 morning time block. And I know they're serious because maybe it's somebody that's in my world or in my organization and I'll reach out to them in the morning and I get it reply back. Hey, can I call you after 11? And it's like, you know, they're doing their prospecting yeah. time and those are how they're winning it. I actually didn't do it that way. Um, I, I really didn't like prospecting as most agents probably don't, but I knew it was a necessary thing in order to hit my goals. So my mentality going into it was how do I minimize the amount of hours that I prospect, but maximize my results. So what I personally did is I don't even know how I came in touch with the MIT lead response study, but early on in my career that got drilled into me and it was such a profound thing because it gave me the confidence to know, okay, this is when I'm going to put my time in and this is when I'm going to get the best results. So for me, that was Wednesdays and Thursdays and it was eight to 9 a.m. in the morning and then four to 6 a.m. at night. Now, sometimes I'd have showings in the afternoon, but I could still get the four to five block in at night. And a lot of times I'd have showings scheduled and they'd cancel and I'd just replace it with more green time. So if you're not where you want to be and you want to get further faster, just increase the amount of time that you're prospecting and lead generating and voila, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, that was kind of the way I did it. Let me ask you though, what about morning routines? We hear a lot about morning routines. Um, do, do you believe in morning routines? Do you have one? Like, did you have one as an agent? Like, what, what do you say about that? Yeah, as an agent, I did my, my whole thing. And if you guys have followed me for any amount of time on social media or YouTube, I, I'm all about freedom. And freedom to me is not having a very strict routine, even though we're talking about following your schedule right now. For me, like you didn't really like prospecting. I didn't really like prospecting, but it was it was a means to an end. It was a necessary evil. And that's how I feel about like strict routines. I'm just more of a free spirit. So when, when I was like in my grind phase, I'll refer to it as my grind phase, like, hey, I need to just get, you know, four transactions a month happening type of mindset from zero. I had a very strict morning routine and a very strict calendar to today in my life. Now that I'm financially independent, it's it's not so much strict and, and I really enjoy that. And, and now, also, now that I'm a dad of two little kids, like I remember thinking like, man, why don't all these agents have a strict morning routine? And now that I have kids, I realize like, okay, I, I see why having a strong morning routine might be tough if you have kids, although it's still possible. So yeah, man, when I was uh, early on in my real estate career, there was this really, really cool workout group. You might've heard of it since we were both from Charlotte uh, called F3. There yep. was this morning workout group, Faith uh, Family Fitness, and it was at 5.30 outdoors, uh, just men before they went to work, working out outside, rain, snow, whatever, didn't matter. And that was awesome for me. So I'd get up at 4.50, I would eat a banana, and I would be on like a field at a school or, or a neighborhood by, by 5.30 to work out for an hour. And that was awesome. I'd go home, I would shower, typically read or, or listen to something while I was getting ready to just, you know, uh, get my mindset right. And then on my way to the office, I would either be listening to something to, um, to, to help my mindset again, or I'd be role playing my scripts. Ideally, I got to the office by 745 to role play my scripts. But if I was running behind, for whatever reason, I would role play my scripts in the car on the way there. And by 8am, I was hitting go on my dialer to start calling the new expireds. Uh, so it was workout, it was mindset. And it was, you know, getting usually like a healthy shake or breakfast in before the office. Very so good. it's it's crucial, man. It's when, when you're operating at that level, and you need that discipline in your life to achieve those types of goals I, I think it's it's essential I would um I'd leave my house I lived way down on the peninsula so I had a, a little bit of a drive um I'd go to the Y 
Um, I'd listen to a ritual podcast on my way to the Y. I'd listen to a podcast while I was working out. Um, I'd end my workout with a run, which I felt like really increased my energy going through like the rest of the day. I'd hit up the juice bar. I'd make it to my office by eight. And that was my routine. And I always felt like whenever that didn't happen for whatever reason, my day wasn't as good or wasn't as productive. And it might've just been a mental block, but I feel like those morning routines are really critical. And the second part of that word routine, like actually having a routine that pre-frames you for success. So I don't think it's as important what it is. I just think it's that you have something that consistently gets you into movement. Movement's critical um, before you sit down at your desk and before you start making calls to get your energy up, to get your oxygen flowing um, and then get right into it, man. And it's, it's awesome. Um, last thing on this topic before we move on to the next one. Um, what about calendar types? There's all types of calendars out there. There's different planners. There's just sheets of paper. There's, you know, electronic versions. What's your take on that? Yeah, I always liked paper calendars. I, I got away from it for a little while in the last couple of years just because I'm not so scheduled anymore. Um, however, I was like, you know, what? I could use a little more discipline in my life to get to that next financial level. So I brought the paper calendar back. I got one from Amazon. It was like $6.00. And every 15 minutes from like 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. is, is uh, you have a line. So you can really time block effectively every 15 minutes. And I love that style. It's eight and a half by 11. I still have my Google calendar just because so many things happen where people send a calendar invite that you accept and things like that now. Uh, and it's nice to have recurring things like this show is a recurring thing on my calendar. But, you know, I, I just find when I can actually write, put pen to paper on my calendar and and plan out my week. Like I, I was actually just doing this yesterday morning. Um, I, I went back to, cause I just bought this like a month ago. So I got, you know, January through like April, just blank. So I went back to April and I was actually just sketching out like what I want my ideal week to look like now. So, so I'm putting back a little more structure to my weeks, but, uh, but yeah, it, I think it's, you know, it doesn't have to be paper. I think for most people, though, it should be paper. I think they'd just be more effective with it. And especially when you're prospecting and you got your calendar book open right there on your desk and you know what appointment times you have available and you see right there your different time blocks, what you got to do. And it's just always right in front of you. And it's a tangible thing that you're carrying with you. Um, so that's yeah. what I prefer. Yeah. I, th I think that most people, you know, their knee jerk response to this is like, oh, electronic. There's so much good technology out there. But I, too, found it to be more effective to have a written daily, weekly view planner. Yeah. Um, and that's how I would block out my time and my colors. And I would have my red time there, which was like my showing time. And I would have those blocks pre-framed in there to make sure that, like, you know, personal stuff didn't, like, creep in and start robbing me of that time. And then what I could do is when I was prospecting, I could just have those open spots look. And I'd be like, you know, one of the things, you know, you might close out a prospecting call with what's a good time for you you know, Thursday at five or Friday at noon. And you yeah. could just go to those blocks right there and fill them in and have that at your fingertips. So that's what worked best for me. Um, I'm always, I'm always one that's a proponent of, you know, success through things you've actually done, not through theory. And for me, that just worked better. Um, I had my CRM, you know, so I had like my electronic version of tasks and things like that, but it's generally like, what am I going to do and how am I going to flow through this week? Um, always worked best for me on paper.